Hello and welcome to this week's edition of WCS Game Day. I'm your co-host, Jeremy Qualls, and with me as always is my co-host, Tate Matthews. Welcome. We're going to start off uh, the show today talking uh, just for a second about the Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Ceremony that happened on Monday of this week. It was an excellent ceremony, the biggest ceremony that the TSSAA puts on. It's an extreme honor to be in that room. The names that are around the room that hang, hung from those banners were, you know, just names from the past that are just that have gone on and play on Sundays. And it's pretty uh, pretty neat that we had two of our own from WCS Sports Conference participating in this uh, in this ceremony. Uh, there are 33 total nominees that that get invited to this, and we had uh, Ravenwood's Van Jefferson was up for the back of the year. And uh, Corey Fantoni of Franklin High School was up for the kick of the year. And uh, those guys did a great job. Let's talk about uh, Jefferson first, Tate. What are Jefferson's cumulative stats up until this point? Well, he's had an unbelievable year. Obviously, they played 14 games, 60 catches, a little over 1,100 yards, 12 touchdowns. Now, we're not into making excuses here for anybody, but uh, one thing that you and I agree held Van Jefferson back, 1,100 yards. I'm being conservative here. He's all probably only played a total amount of playing time up to about 11 games. Now divide that 11, that's 100 yards a game, you know. So because of the scores that they've, they've, they've blown a lot of people out. So huge year for Van. And then when you look at how successful they've been running the ball, uh, 1,100 yards, 12 touchdowns, 60 catches, just a great senior year by Van. I don't know this stat. I'd like to know. Uh, if he's dropped one, I haven't seen it. That would be the most impressive stat that he's had. So, uh, you know, great senior year. That AAA back of the year, that might have been the most loaded class out of all of them, and they were all loaded. Well, we knew going in, we had talked about it on the air, that uh, Van probably was was definitely behind coming in with Juwan Jennings. He gets all the press. He's going to UT. He's a great, fantastic quarterback there at Blackman. And I, personally, I think I wish they would wait till after the Blue Cross Blue Shield Bowl to see which team carries the furthest, just because of the fact that I think it's unfair that Blackman gets eliminated, Ravenwood's still alive and getting to play. That's neither here nor there. But, you know, uh, Van Jefferson, as a receiver, he's not in control of his destiny. That's right. I mean, you're looking at he comes in with 12 touchdowns, second on the team behind Seth Rowland, who's a 1,400-yard rusher for the team at 17 touchdowns. And you're at the mercy of the quarterback. What if the quarterback's not very good that night? What if – they're triple teaming him like they have the last two games. What if uh, four games in the regular season, he hasn't played the second half, which comes up to two full games? You know, all those things are, are, are you know, kind of taken into consideration where Jawan Jennings himself is in control completely of the rushing, of the throwing, and the whole scheme. So, I mean, nothing against Jawan Jennings. I'm taking a right. hat off to Jawan Jennings, great kid. Uh, I know his stepmother well. Uh, you know, he's a, a superb athlete. He's going to have a great career at UT. But there's a lot of things there that I think I wish they would kind of wait on just to see and weigh in. He also had uh, three returns at 52 yards, which came in the last two games, you know, and, and he's sitting there. Uh, great year for Van Jefferson. I know he was a little bit – he's a competitor at heart, complete competitor, and was just a little bit taken back about it. But I, I mentioned to him yesterday uh, – Monday, excuse me, that uh, – that a lot of these guys would give that award up to be playing this coming Saturday and an opportunity to win a state championship ring and a state MVP. No, no question about it, and you're right. If, you're, if you are a competitor, if you are a team player, that's right. It's a team sport, the ultimate goal. Nobody says at the beginning of the year, what's your goal? Hey, I want to win Mr. Football. I want to win a state championship is what they say. So, yeah, uh, again, you can't go wrong with either one of them, but, uh, you know, Van had an outstanding senior year, and like we talked about many weeks, as good of an athlete he is, he's that good or better of a person. He's a fine young man. Uh, talk about representing this school, this sports conference well. Um, that's the model right there. Absolutely. I've watched him in the last two games. He's had one, one catch in the last two games. They triple teamed him. Uh, when they played uh, in the semifinals, or excuse me, the quarterfinals, and then at Whitehaven they, they shaded towards him. He had a lot of speed towards him that way. He couldn't get it quite get a ball thrown to him. And, you know, it could have been easily from his perspective to get down and worry about those stats and whatnot, but he's the ultimate cheerleader. He's the ultimate team guy. I'm sure he gets thrown in the awkward spotlight of light when you've got uh, your, your brothers there, 89 other brothers beside you, and you're, you're wanting to, to, to sell this one team, one unity, and you constantly get thrust into the spotlight where Seth Rowland's sitting there with 1,400 yards rushing. Cole Brown's an exceptional quarterback, but he plays it off well. He plays his team first always, 
And, and I think he knows his IQ is extremely high on the football field, and he knows that if he can draw attention to himself uh, defensively, that, that opens those running lanes for, for Seth and those guys. But like you said, he is an ultimate character guy. Oh, yeah. And, and, and Coach Hester will tell you, anybody on that staff will tell you, Austin Percy might be the most intimidating blocker on that team. Van Jefferson's right under him. I mean, they, they, they used Van Jefferson on a crackback. Uh, he's downfield blocking, springing runs for Seth Rollins. So you're right. Great team guy. Could easily, if he was a selfish player, get mad because he's not getting the ball. He hadn't done that at all. He's been the first one to pick him up. And, and, and that's, I'm going to say, part of the reason why they're still playing. Uh, there's only two left in 6A, and they're one of them. Well, uh, Maryville, I'm sure, have wa has watched enough tape this week to get ready for that. But all I can tell you, if they ever get in single coverage, they've had it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, 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 congratulations to Van. Like I said, Van did not win it. He was a finalist of the, of the three uh, backs. We also had Franklin High School kicker, place kicker, punter, Corey Fantoni, also up for uh, kicker of the year, which is a little different than the back because there's only one group. That's right. One classification of, of kickers, and, it, and he made it into the finalist of the three. Uh, I forget, it, the, the name escapes me from the kid from Udawal, won it. However, Corey, uh, being a finalist, is an honor himself. And what, is it, what are his stats? Unbelievable stats. I guess the, the best one for him is he's committed to go to the University of Missouri to be a, uh, I don't know if he'll be a kicker, punter, both. But SEC, he's going to get an SEC education and be able to play SEC football. But six of eight field goals, 34 of 36 extra points. 42.5 punting average. There's a lot of college guys that would like to have that average. And then one of the most impressive things, I think, is 45 out of 53 kickoffs he kicked out of the end zone. What does that mean? They don't have a chance to run one back on you. They're starting at the 20 every time. So a great year. And he also missed two games. That was what I was going to allude to. Now let's rewind the clock back to those games that he missed. One of those was against Shelbyville in a loss. Now I don't know if that plays out down the road any further. Uh, as far as seedings, I don't guess it does. But still, you remember that game, and I remember you talking about on the air that if he was uh, at the game or in the game and participating, that's a total different game because it flips the field on them uh, defensively and as, and as well as uh, going for fourth down, they would be kicking those field goals. And that's right. Every, ki every offensive possession that's a kickoff starts at the 20 because you don't have a time, you don't have a chance to return it, and then flipping the field on the punts. And they lost by three points. So let's talk about the recruiting process for these two young men real quick. Uh, you, you spoke of Fantoni going to Mizzou, committed to Mizzou. Uh, I know that his final two schools were down to Stanford and Mizzou. Those are not too, too uh, you know, that's a pretty interesting combination of teams for that, for that guy. Yeah, I, I, would have, I would assume that, you know, on one hand, a Stanford education, how can you turn that down? That's a long way. That's a long flight. I don't care who you are. Uh, Mama and Daddy can watch him play every game at Missouri if they want to. Absolutely. And, and then, the SEC. And then let's let's talk about Van real quick. Van is 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 holding on in some in some camps. He's holding on by a thread. In other camps, he's strongly committed to Georgia. I know that Coach Rick probably will be in town sometime this week. Uh, I know that we've had some visits by Coach Butch Jones and the UT staff. Uh, you know, his Final Four came down to Ohio State, uh, Florida, UT. And Georgia, with the selection of Georgia and the commitment there, but some camps say that that uh, that commitment is not very strong right now. I'll be surprised, but you know I've been surprised before. I know UT is not going to give up on them. Ohio State's not going to give up on them, and then obviously Georgia won't either. And then with Ole Miss. Uh, kind of sneaking in there. I think it's a good thing, but it's also kind of made it harder on the staffs. These kids recruit each other now. And, you know, as you know from being at the banquet, uh, the Drew Richmond youngster, the AAA lineman winner out of MUS who's going to Ole Miss, he's, uh, he's put the full course press on Van. So, you know, I would have been happy to just have one of those options. He can go anywhere he wants, so good for him. He'll make the right decision. He's, he's a mature young man. And right now, this is just us speculating, obviously. Uh, uh, I would say Florida's probably on the back burner just due to the fact that they have the, the turnover and coach there. Uh, I think that Ole Miss is going to end up taking that slot in that final four when he takes his official visits. But we wish him the best of luck. Like I said, great kid. Any program that gets him will be uh, uh, better for it. Uh, not only from a standpoint of on the field, but off the field and, and behind the scenes. So let me say this real quick. He, when his dad, remember his dad is Coach Jefferson of the Titans. When he moved here, they weren't real sure where they were going to put him. Credit to Coach Hester. I mean, Coach Jefferson went in there and interviewed him, basically. <laughs> Why should I move in this zone and put my kid here? He was looking at some of the private schools. He, was he decided, hey, this is the best place for me to be. You know, 
I don't know those. Well, I know a couple of the other schools you were looking at, and they're not playing on Saturday. So uh, it's just it's just a feel good story, man. Hopefully, uh, one more chapter on Saturday. Yes, absolutely, and we we look forward to that. Speaking of that, the uh, championship game is 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 Saturday. It's set. Six A will be playing at uh, six uh, six o'clock that night uh, against Maryville. We'll get in that in just a second. Uh, let's go back to our our WCS Sports Conference representatives. We also have the Tennessee East West all-star game coming up, which is also in itself a, a, a great honor and to be selected on this team. We have a couple guys also participating there. Coach Chris Hughes of the Fairview Yellow Jackets will be on the coaching staff uh, for the for that group. And uh, Austin Percy from Ravenwood and, of course, Fan Tony will be uh, also selected in that group to play. Uh, Van not playing in that game because he'll be playing in the, in the uh, Army All-American game later on. What an honor that is for Van, but and you've been singing his praises probably more than anybody out there all year long. I'm so glad. I believe Greg Wyant. No, no, no. It was Salisbury, the coach, Coach Salisbury from Whitehaven that they just played. He selected Austin Percy. He's going to be very happy with that. I am so glad that that young man got in that in that game because he deserves it. Well, he's he's been my dark horse all year. You know that most uh, un, unrated, low rated, under the radar player of the district to me. You know, he's coming in right now. He's sitting at uh, 47 catches at 811, uh, 811 yards for the season with a four-star sitting across from you. Now, that's helped him open up. But at the same time, he brings so many untangibles. I mean, as far as the defensive goes, him playing his position on defense and, 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 and playing it well and to the fact with, with the defense, you know, 143 yards in, in 14 games. Oh, excuse me, 143 points that they've only given up and outscored teams 527 to 143. That's just a testament to themselves of how they bought into the defense in that. Uh, so let's get into this real quick. Let's talk about the semifinal game. We go down, we like long trip. They take G2 Bar takes nine charter buses. That's great. Nine charter buses. On Thanksgiving weekend. On Thanksgiving weekend. School's out. You wouldn't think that anybody would show up. <laughs> right. And they've got nine charter buses coming into uh, to, to Memphis White uh, Whitehaven. It was an unbelievable scene. They had more people in their crowd than Whitehaven, the home home uh, field, had. And it was a uh, it was a, a, a very good environment. It was a great test going into this Saturday's game because they had not really seen the speed that they had seen at Whitehaven. No doubt about it. And Whitehaven's a, a very great program. You know, every year coming out of six A, if you go west you're probably going to have to go through Whitehaven to get to Cookville. And, 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 and it is. It was a good test. I think it ended up being a good thing for them that it was on the road. Uh, they hadn't been on the road in the playoffs yet. Uh, and, and I didn't understand it at first because they're undefeated. Why are they going on the road? It's just the way it is this year. Everybody had to go west. They go on the road. They're, it's cold. They had to fight. Uh, it, was a, it was a different kind of team, and they did. They got after them in any, every form or fashion. Now they get to go back on the road again in Cookville on Saturday. Um, it was, it was, it was uh, I think, everything out of it was positive. No injuries. It really, really was a good game for the Raptors. Get a chance to play on synthetic turf, which you're going to be able to, to come right. in and take away. Um, you know, Ravenwood's MO all year has been strike first, okay? Uh, last two games has kind of been – Questionable, you know, we had in the first in the semifinal game, excuse me, the quarterfinal game, I kind of had a trouble in that opening drive. This game, uh, a little bit of a trouble, but went ahead and punched it in, took the lead early, 7-0, uh, and then the, the the pick six happened. Cole kind of Brown, the quarterback, struggled just a little bit early. Like I said, there there was a lot of speed on the field. There's one particular play in, in, that sticks out to me. Van gets one on one coverage. Okay, so we're sitting there thinking licking our chops. Now, the number two that's guarding him, I, the name escapes me, this kid is, 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 is a specimen. Van beats him on a little stop and go. Cole drops back, throws the pass, has him led, and the kid that's playing safety literally runs 30 yards across the field. Now, I'm thinking that's touchdown all the way and makes a play to knock the ball down. That just, to me, showed how much speed that we had not seen all year. i tell you what we'll do. When we come back from break, we'll come back to this White, uh, Whitehaven game. Uh, the semifinals, which Ravenwood punched their ticket to get into the state championship game against Maryville. Stay with us. We'll be right back. If you're looking for a loan or you'd like to buy a home when you want to land a job or your identity's been robbed, annualcreditreport.com, the one you can depend upon. Check your credit to review all your bills and payments too. It's as easy as can be and it's absolutely free. Hey! Annualcreditreport.com, the one you can depend upon. 
Beware of the others, there's always a catch. They claim to be free, but strings are attached. Their ads can be funny, so don't be deceived. Hold on to your money, there's one site you need. AnnualCreditReport.com, the one you can depend upon. AnnualCreditReport.com, the one you can depend upon. AnnualCreditReport.com, no hidden fees, absolutely free. Hello and welcome back to WCS Game Day. I'm co-host Jeremy Qualls and with me is Tate Matthews. Uh, let's, let's go back to the, the Whitehaven game, the semifinals of the 6A uh, state championship playoffs. And uh, we're going to talk about real quick the rundown of what happened at Whitehaven. When we left for break, we were speaking about the speed that they had seen uh, uh, you know, at Whitehaven. We talked about the temperature that night. The temperature that night was around 40 degrees, dropped into the 30s. Uh, uh, great football temperature, but at, at the cold weather always seems to make a difference in, in those type games. But the speed from Whitehaven was very evident. That's right, and, and they knew that going in. They, they knew, hey, they have the speed advantage on us. Now what do we have against them? And, and, and one thing that they really felt they had, and, and I, I don't know if you saw it, there was an article in the paper uh, in the Memphis, uh, I believe it's Commercial Appeal. Appeal. Big headlines. Ravenwood not physical enough. Well, if coach, of course, Coach Hester got hold of that at about 1.30, and they already thought that was an advantage they had, and, man, he played that thing up big time. But uh, what they really wanted to do was pretty neat, and what they wanted to do was set the tone. And, and we talked about Austin Percy, probably their most intimidating blocker. And this was designed. First offensive play, they put Austin in a, in a motion, and he goes to crack back on the linebacker. And the whole goal was you hit this guy as hard as you can. We're going to let them know. We're the more physical team. Of course, Austin did it to a T, set the tone, and they did. They got after them. Whitehaven has not been hit like the Ravenwood Raptors hit them on Friday night. That was a complete mistake on Whitehaven's part. I know yeah. we have the we have the inside uh, insiders notion on this because we see them every week and we know how physical this football team is. We talk about every week the amount of points that they've given up on the year. And I spoke of it earlier: five hundred and twenty-seven to one hundred and forty-three. And, uh, you know, if you look at the quarter-by-quarter quarter breakdown, in the first quarter, they've outscored their opponents 160 points to 39. <laughs> you know, the second, ha uh, second quarter, 187 points to 14. That is what stands out to me because usually the majority of their points come scored on them coming to the second half because then you've got your JV guys out there, your second, third sure. string, freshman possibly, whatever happens, happens in a point in time that the game is already decided. Uh, you know, up until uh, up until the, the playoffs, the most points scored on was by Old Sparty at 21. <laughs> and you know those points came late. That's right. So, I mean, for, for, for Memphis to come in and say, for Memphis, whose teams are always notorious for not being physical, right. saying they're not physical enough, I think they made a mistake. Now, in, in Memphis' behalf, they, their, their SEC commit – was out injured that night. Now, whether or not he makes a difference, because I know he's a, a middle linebacker, I, it's hard to say. Uh, you know, that's that's purely speculation at this point. Uh, we didn't run the ball a whole lot anyways. We threw the ball quite often that night. Uh, the, the run game worked a whole lot better than the, the, the passing game did, and I think that the, pa the, the running game got us over the hump that night, but we didn't do it a whole lot. We kept continuing to look for the throw, and I think it was a good point to, 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 to look at if we can throw against this speed and this caliber athlete, we can throw against anybody. Yeah, and remember that the, the the first points was a pick six, so they only gave up. This defense only gave up seven points, and and it's not a knock on Cole Brown. He you know he he has been unbelievable this year. First year as a starter, he's undefeated as a starting quarterback. But the first points were a pick six. They didn't score again until the fourth quarter, and that was when they were trying to run the clock out. And uh, you know. I don't know that the, they, they would have had the field position they had in the end. So at the very best, they held Whitehaven, the best team the West has to offer, to seven points. That's right. It was 24-7. Game was decided. Game was over. Everybody on the Whitehaven side was already hitting the exits. <laughs> uh, they came out, played a little passive defensively. Let's get out of this thing. Let's make them eat up the clock. They kept throwing and did a couple of plays there to, to, to get the field position. You could tell at that point in time, everybody already knew the game was over. They gave up that touchdown, like you said, real late, and uh, the game was already in hand. But, uh, you know, very well game, uh, very well uh, hit game-wise. Those guys were had some very big hits that night from the Ravenwood defensive perspective. 
I, I think that number just sticks out to me more than anything. Now, we're going to get on to the Maribel side in just a minute, but and I know that they, they're, they've outscored people. But I'm not so sure, with the exception of Oakland, that they may have faced a defense like Ravenwood. They, they, you're right, they haven't. And here's the thing, they're different than Oakland. We, we've, uh, we've had one guy tell us that he thinks Ravenwood's defense actually stacks up better against uh, Maryville's because you have to be disciplined. If you're not disciplined, you stand no chance. No chance. Ravenwood's uh, defense is disciplined and physical. Might not as, be as fast as Oakland, but I guarantee you they hit every bit as hard, and these guys are disciplined. They don't make a whole lot of mistakes, and that's something you have to do against Maryville or you're going to be in trouble, and you're going to be in trouble early. Well, the, uh, the, the final statistics for the Whitehaven game are as, as follows. Cole Brown, 8 of 18, had 118 yards with one touchdown, but he did have the two interceptions, one for a pick six. Didn't have it quite his best game, uh, but Cole Brown is such a threat, as we've seen uh, all year long when he picks and chooses spots. You know, he could go for 50 for a touchdown in a hurry. Uh, has a cannon of an arm. Uh, I expect that to be a difference maker against the Maryville game. Uh, Seth rolling with 15 attempts at 95 yards, one touchdown. Uh, Seth did a great job. Had another fumble. He's had three fumbles in the last two games. I hope that little spell will be over come Saturday night. But we've only had how many fumbles all year? Well, if he's had – now, he, he, there was only three all year long. I think we're up to six now, three more in the playoffs. So. Yep. So uh, Pretty good. We'll take that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and once again, Nick Barton coming in. Nick Nick is a, is a diamond in the rough because you're thinking outside. You're thinking Jefferson. You're thinking Percy. And there's Nick Barton right there. He had four catches for 103 yeah. yards. If those linebackers ever go out – he runs that little tight drag across the middle, and boom, they've hit it all year long. So it'll be interesting to see how Maryville adjusts to that. It will because nobody's covered him all playoff long, and he just keeps 100-yard receiving nights and a TD reception. And remember, he's a heck of a player on defense. He's one of the guys we talked about before the station camp game. Watch out for him. He had the game, I don't want to say game-saving interception against Independence back early in the year. But remember, they were driving. He picks it off and stops it. So uh, he, he is. He's one. Maryville is going to have to account for him, or he'll have a big night. Last out of the night defensively, Garrison Geronimus. We've talked about him all year long. 11 tackles, two for a loss he, yeah. with one sack. That's the easiest money there is. Who's the leading tackler every week for the Raptors? Geronimus. Every week. So that gives us uh, – it, it takes us into Saturday night, the 6A state championship game against Maryville. Man, I can't be excited enough with our sports conference. We've had this, this, this saying all year, one conference, one goal. Unfortunately, we wanted all our teams to participate, get as far as you can. But like life and like in sports, uh, all these paths have to merge into one at some point in time. The mystery is what path and where you'll be at the end of that time. And, and Ravenwood happens to be that team that is there. Uh, nothing to take away from uh, all of our other teams. Congratulations to all of our other programs. They've done a fantastic job all year long. They've represented our conference well, uh, and, and they've been great. But uh, here we are in the state championship game of 6A against Maryville. Now, could this be a David and Goliath story right now? You know, if you look at records and paper and history, yeah, it's David versus Goliath. But, you know, it's hard to call Raven whether they're 14-0. and 0. <laughs> Uh, it's hard to call them David, but yeah, I guess it is. If I'm Coach Hester, I'm playing it up as that. We're going to throw the biggest rock we got. Absolutely, and I'm sure that's where they're going to play it. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's unfortunate when you mention that name, Maryville. Everybody's like, oh, no. I really think from all the coaches that I have spoken to and the belief system right now of the Ravenwood Raptors, those kids want it so bad that it's not a David Glass story. I think that they haven't seen the speed all year long. And I think that this could match it well. But let's just talk about some Maryville numbers real quick as we get into it. Maryville obviously coming in at 14-0 this year. Uh, they're number 24th in the country. Ravenwood's sitting right now at 94th in the country. Uh, 70, 70 spots is a pretty big discrepancy. Yes. But we'll see uh, how that happens. 14 state championships possessed the country's longest win streak when it was snapped in 2008 in the state championship game at 74 straight wins. Uh, they have appeared in every state championship in the last four years, winning the last uh, three, beating uh, Hendersonville last year. Bad. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that in itself could be intimidating. If I, I'm curious, Coach Rick, uh, you know, it's, it's today's social media and today's uh, Internet at the finger, it's hard to not get this information, but we've probably tried to keep away from that information just for the fact 
of intimidation, but I don't think those the Raptors can be intimidated right now. I don't think so either. And, and hey, I know he, I know Coach Hester's playing it this way. If we're going to win this thing, let's beat the best. Let's beat Maryville. You know, there's no asterisk. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. You know, and, and we can say we beat the best. Uh, a couple things on that. 2008 is the last time uh, was when the, the 74 game winning streak was broken. It was broken by the Hillsborough Burroughs. Who was the coach of that team? Scott Blade, now at Independence. Uh-huh. Coach Blade was the coach of that team. The three out of the last four that they've, lo- that they've won, the one they lost, it was to Whitehaven a few years ago. So all these things, they it's keep converging. Messing. That's right. It's that's converging. Right. So, uh, but, yeah, they're, 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 they're a very good team. They're very well coached. George Quarles is what he's done is unbelievable. He's lost seven games in, in, in I believe, ten years. So, but they're not scared of them, I assure you. There is a chance they're going to have to play their best ball game. But, you know, I, I don't see Ravenwood as a huge underdog on this, and I guarantee you George Quarles doesn't. I did. I actually got to sit by him at the banquet. Very nice guy, very humble. You would never know that this guy's sitting on 14 rings, you know. <laughs> but, you know, it's just uh, – it's funny. You, you pull the common man that doesn't know anything about Ravenwood, it's like, oh, there's no way. You, Me and you have seen Ravenwood all year long. We know that the kids have the determination, the drive. They have the athletes. I think that uh, this can be a very interesting matchup. Uh, you know, the closest differential they've had all year is by uh, Hardin Valley, 13 plus points there that they won that game, 16 to three, and Oakland last week, 26-14 by a margin of 12. Now, interesting note that you pointed out, they have two teams that they played early in the year that are playing for state championship Saturday. Alcoa being their number one rival right off the bat, Gary Rankin became the the all-time winningest football coach last week. They beat Alcoa 41 to 14. Thumped them, and and and. I think Alcoa has beat them once since they started playing. Now, Alcoa is a 3A school, but again, Alcoa has been highly ranked. And then they also beat West 31 to 16, who's in the 5A game versus Hillsboro. So, uh, you know, they've played some good talent, uh, but I don't think they've faced the caliber, caliber of teams in the playoffs that Ravenwood has. Well, it's one of those deals where there is a big discrepancy between 6A and 3A. Now, Alcoa is an anomaly in there. Right. There are some other pockets, CPA, being an anomaly of those 4A schools. But I'm telling you, the overall speed, quickness, and size of a 6A team versus any other is, is almost night and day. Now, 5A and 6A have a lot of similarities, but uh, there's a big discrepancy there. And they, you know, they go into that Alcoa game knowing they should win it. If they, if they don't, they're probably you know, pretty upset about it. And Alcoa, is, that's probably their championship game every right. year. They're wanting to win that game for bragging rights because they pretty much going to be the – you know, year in and year out, going to be the favorite to win. So that brings us to it. Who's going to win? How many weeks we've been doing this? Fifteen. This is week fifteen for G2 us. Two bar, baby. G I'm going. With, I'm, I'm going. Fear the visor. Fear the visor. Hail Hester. What a year this has been. This has been so much fun with us. This is me yeah. coming in as a as, as a newcomer to the system, not knowing anybody, going into schools, not knowing a single child in this school system. Uh, People probably call me Ravenwood Bias. I have been also. But you know what? I, I have tried to spread our wealth amongst all of our schools evenly as possible. When it comes down to it this point in the year, once again, sooner or later, we've got to merge to one. Right. And right now we're at Ravenwood. Those kids uh, are great kids. They've accepted me. They, they you know, uh, I, I like seeing those kids play. I wish them the best of luck. G2 Bar, not going to go against Hale Hester. Uh, they have the culture going right now in every sport. They've played well. Uh, they're going to pull it off. It's going to be fun. And, and Tennessee Tech is only an hour and a half drive. It's a nice stadium. Get up there and support them, man. I, I know every head coach in this, in this league, and I guarantee you, Brian Rector, Donnie Webb, Mike Woodward, Scott Blade, every single one of them is pulling for Ravenwood. I promise you that. One conference, one goal. And if we, uh, it, 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 I always took the standpoint, if Bolivar, when I was at Lexington or Southside, won the state championship, I was happy at the fact that I was a part of that district, that I'm in the hardest district in the, in the state. So our district, WCS Sports Conference, one conference, one goal. That is Saturday at 7 o'clock, uh, excuse me, 6 o'clock, kickoff time versus Maryville. I'm your co-host, Jimmy Qualls. This is Tate Matthews with me as always. Stay nice, be nice, and always remain nice here in Williamson County. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.